and we're live. Uh, Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's Monday. You know, I happen to look forward to Mondays. Like, I think that's why I did my show on Monday because Monday is always like that drag day. And like this way, it's like I always have something cool to look forward to, which is hanging out with all of my reseller peeps mm. here in the live chat and having awesome people on like Ryan and Allie Roots of Rally Roots. So welcome. Yay. Guys. Hello. We got the menagerie going today. <laughs> yeah, we're at home. So the dogs are with us. Yeah, Zero. She was upset that I was sitting here not paying attention to her. So I figured I'll just pick her up <laughs> for a minute or two and then she'll be fine. <laughs> My dogs are locked out of the room because mm. we're not we're not quite bird safe yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. we don't want a viral video for the wrong reasons. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But how are you guys? I haven't Good. seen you since, well, since Vegas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not too long ago, actually, whenever you yeah. think about it. I mean, it's less than a year. That yeah. was such a fun event. Are you going again this year? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Wouldn't miss it. We're talking about the a Boss Reseller Remix, which is the first time they ever held it was last year. And it's here in Las Vegas. And when, the dates are set. It's October. I forget. But trust me, guys, we'll be talking a lot more about it as we get closer. But yeah, I'll definitely be yeah. there. You guys are going to go again? And uh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. We love. We have like to go things. shopping this time, though. Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. We must. We yeah, must. yeah, 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 for sure. We actually, I don't think we've ever been thrifting in Vegas because every time we go out there, it's it's either like for a conference yeah. or we just don't have time to do it, you know? So yeah, there's we need so to much make to time. do and see in Vegas. We don't have Vegas in Florida. We have thrift stores in Florida. So we were like, oh, man. Right. I mean, we drift everywhere we go but when we were in vegas we just had so much going on and we don't rent a car so taking an uber out to a thrift store wasn't like yeah you know it didn't really make sense <laughs> we'll have you'll have uh uber a la danny yeah oh, yeah yeah that's perfect then <laughs> for sure awesome so um i have uh, titled this is ask you anything so over anything. The chat there guys if you have questions for Ryan and Allie, um, please go ahead and post them in all caps, if you would, says the chat gets moving pretty quick and I don't want to miss anybody. But um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was diversity. Oh, and there's the chat. You guys are known for your eBay selling and in a lot of your earlier video, all eBay centric, but yes, yeah, you're doing something new these days. Yeah, I mean, so fairly, I mean, it's fairly recent too. So we don't want to like say that it's the only thing we're doing because it's not, you know, it's just something sure. that we've, we've added to what we're currently doing. eBay hasn't stopped at all. eBay is still our, I mean, it was actually wasn't our no, number one last month for the first time in seven years. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it still is, you know, our one of our top sources of income. Um, but the new thing is the live auctions through whatnot. Yeah. Um, and it's been going really well. It's a lot of fun. I, you know, I like it because it's kind of like it's the most fun I've personally had reselling, mm -hmm. actually selling the item in years. And mm -hmm. it's cool because you get to do this sort of thing, interact with people, see yeah. the chats, have fun and then also sell some stuff. So I thought I, I think the way that that reselling is kind of transforming into that sort of a method is really cool while still not taking anything away from you know, having stuff on eBay and letting it sell both obviously have their benefits. eBay is open 24 yeah. seven. Whatnot is only open when we go live. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also whatnot is good for people with the following. If you have no following, whatnot, you have to build up a following. So you mm. take a hit in the beginning by selling yeah. items and then you have to sell good things. So people come back. So there there's, you know, every rose has its thorn. <laughs> But I think that, you know, and you'll probably agree with this, too, because you've been reselling for just a little while. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> just a little while. Um, times change and you have to be able to change with the times. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we tell people all the time is the businesses and the people that aren't willing to adjust and change and pivot with the times are the people that will eventually fail. And it's one of the main reasons why, you know, Ali says all the time, she, she this is like one of her sayings is don't be a blockbuster. And that's just a prime example of like a company that didn't adjust with the times and eventually or failed. Sears. Or a Sears, yeah. Don't be Blockbuster, don't be Sears. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's so um, true. Yeah. And like this whatnot thing is, I mean, it, it's basically a home shopping network. That's what it mm -hmm. is. It's the new version of home shopping network. And it's just another way to add more money to the bottom line 
and another form of reselling. That's all it is. Yeah, so. well, I am all about multiple streams of income. It's like I was even thinking the other day, uh, and and go to the whatnot thing. I, I think somebody picked up on what was happening on YouTube. Is many of us started doing live sales on yes. YouTube, yes. which is kind of the same thing. Yes. So then I saw the whatnot thing as like that's brilliant because yeah. now you're taking it and diversifying where your income's coming from. Yes. Because let's face it, for me, if YouTube goes down tomorrow, I've lost the majority of my income. I mean, so yeah. having eBay up to steam and having other things yeah. coming in yeah. with income makes it so you don't have to be so afraid if you yeah. know something happens on one end. But but whatnot's kind of like taken on by storm this whole video yeah. kind of selling thing and uh, it's pretty interesting now they don't yet sell the things that i sell sure right right and it might be a while until they start because they're new yeah. they're emerging they want to build up their category well, they're very niche I mean, yes yeah they've got yeah. their niche and to to your, to your point as well like you've you've been doing auctions and selling on on youtube um during the pandemic the type of items that are currently like what whatnot's really interested in right now is like vintage t-shirts, mm -hmm. Pokemon cards, sneakers, stuff like that. So it is very niche or niche. Niche. <laughs> in either way. I'm it's just French kidding. and it's niche. I'm just kidding. Um, so it is very niche right now, but they are, I think they are wanting to expand. I actually just got an email from them yesterday that said they're adding arts and crafts to the platform. So well, that's see, a, I would say that their clientele, their their person that's attracted to buying on whatnot is the millennials. Yes. So that's what they've really keyed in on is what are the millennials collecting? What are they buying? What is yeah. what do they need? You know, their fashion needs and, and yeah. all of that. So I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I found yeah. myself actually sourcing things oh, yeah. to build up to do a whatnot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it also it's funny how it changes your pers perspective as well. When mm -hmm. like when we're outsourcing, mm -hmm. there's certain things that you know we w when we pick something up now we go, oh, this would be perfect to sell and whatnot. This would be perfect to put on eBay. This would be perfect for Amazon. This would be perfect for for us. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> the it kinda, for us file. Yeah, the yeah. the paradigm of how you think about where and what to sell is is really interesting. It is. It is. And I mean, and, and watching your most recent videos where you're unboxing those um, Amazon mm -hmm. returns, you know, yeah. you guys are even saying, yeah, this is good for yard sale or flea market or, yes. or however right. you're doing. And, and you're very yeah. smart about what things you're going to bring to what platform. And yeah. I think that's super important for people to understand. So how do you make those decisions? For us, it's based on um, so what sort of clientele the market attracts. So um, for like, for example, Amazon, we're selling, we're buying wholesale and selling new stuff mm -hmm. the majority of the time. eBay is more one-off type items, not a lot of wholesale. Um, garage sale and flea market stuff for us is anything that's worth, I would say, less than $20. Um, so the stuff that, because again, we have a higher expenses, not saying that those items are bad to sell and everybody starts somewhere. We used to sell all of those items online. But for us, we have a Cali we have to pay. We have electricity and a mortgage and overhead. We have we have expenses. So for us, it doesn't make sense to have an average sales price of under twenty dollars. It just doesn't yep. work. Um, but those items are really good for in-person sales at garage sales or flea markets or wholesaling, lotting it up into a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of wholesale stuff and then selling it to someone who vends at a flea market. So it's just knowing who your clientele is and what market has those particular you know. Type of items. Yeah. And it's funny you say the $20 because that's one of my things. I always tell people I'm out looking for $20 bills on the shelves yeah. because I, the yeah. time and the effort you put into an item costs money. Yeah. Time is money. So yeah. I try yeah. to teach everybody, be really aware of what your, what your time is worth yeah. and look for those better items. And that $20 bill is now, you know, six months ago, it was a $30 bill. Now it's a $20 bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Everything sure. costs more. Things are more expensive. So much more expensive. <laughs> but instead of sitting there and going, oh, woe is me, you know, inflation is causing me to lose a bunch of money. And what am I yeah. going to do? Instead of doing that, you have to just change your mind to go, okay, I just have to find more expensive items and price my stuff higher. Yeah. People are home. still spending money, even in the worst of times. Yeah. In the recession and the depression, people still buy things. You just yeah. have to figure out yeah. what they're buying at what price point and pivot your business to, to match that. 
Yes. Big drift. Allison's in the in the chat. Hey, What's Allison? up? She goes, I was screaming when you pulled the Pendleton Westerly dude sweater. Oh my gosh, that was you know, nuts. That was that was like one of the did you did you see that that one, the last unboxing we did? Yeah. Okay. That was one of the craziest like reselling moments of of our lives because I like manifested that sweater. I don't know if you heard, but like when when Ali found that or when I found that one cardigan and Ali made it was like me, an open front cardigan that was cream yeah. color. Yeah. Yes. When she when I put it on, I, I literally said, Do I look like the dude? Um, and I am embarrassed to say that I have not seen the big Lebowski. Right? Uh -huh. I, I haven't seen it either. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. But so I know the only one. The okay. sweater. And I missed it, right? Like I just missed that movie. I never watched it. And now it's years later and I need to go back and watch it. So when Ryan said that, I didn't know what he was talking about. Right. He's like, I look like the dude. And I was like, what? And he's like, the dude. <laughs> the big like, what are you talking about? And he was just like, whatever, you know, he just moved on from that. Just and then literally in the next box, what, it wasn't even in the same box. In the next box, we pulled the V dude sweater, like the actual one. It That's is awesome. the actual it's so one. Weird, like the, right. those little strange coincidences, the glitches in the matrix are so funny. Yeah, right, I was freaking <laughs> out. I mean, I that's crazy. Of all the things we've pulled from those boxes that are not good, right? Yeah. We actually pulled a good item, and it was a Pendleton, and it was the dude one, which is what you said. Well, it was like a one in a million chance so we would pull that Pendleton yeah. item, let alone. Yeah. A billion chance of even and with all the boxes you had, what are the chances of you doing those boxes yeah. next to each other? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would have been crazy, right? If it was like a week later, but like the fact the that same it was video? the same video crazy. was nuts. That's awesome. Ooh, Mikey, that ba was nuts. Mikey bags of money in the chat, too. Hey, oh, Mikey. Yeah. Mikey all, bags. Our, all our Vegas friends, Mikey's so much fun. Yes, he is. He's so much fun. I'm sure so he'll funny. be down for thrift shopping, you know. Yeah. We'll just make yeah. it. We'll just, a, we'll just get a little bus and go. Yeah. Oh, that would be hilarious. Well, you just did a video with Mikey, didn't you? Going out to thrift stores. With... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, right. We just, we just went to Vintage Market Days this last Friday. And Sweet. Tootled around. And, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you mind? I saw a question. Do you mind if I answer a question real go quick? Go for it. Go for it. Um, Sandy. Sandy says, as a new person, what platform do you suggest someone start on? So that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. And my answers kind of changed over the years because my answer used to always be start on eBay, start on eBay because it's the it's the biggest platform for used items. And it still is. You know, they still have the most eyes on the stuff. Um, Amazon isn't a very easy place to start. So eBay is a much easier platform yeah. to just, you know, gear up and go. Yeah. Um, but now I tell people, like, start with the, the easiest platform for you. So if yeah. that's if that's eBay, if you have the resources to set up a little photo booth area and start taking pictures. If you have, you know, the ability to, to know how to ship some ship something, yeah. um, that's good. But if not, you can start flipping stuff locally. You could start mm -hmm. by listing stuff on Facebook marketplace and flipping stuff locally until you build up enough budget to start going and sourcing at thrift stores and garage sales and yeah. then transition to eBay. And you have to be patient and willing to make mistakes because you are going to have a very steep learning curve. Like my cousin, decided she was going to sell three books on eBay, right? And she hasn't sold anything on eBay in 15 years. Mm. So she lists the books. I didn't see but one listing and it was listed for, it was like $32. And I was like, okay, you know, with the cost of shipping for that book being media mail, you'll actually make money. And then she called me because she was like, it's time to ship them. She was like, well, this other one that I sold, I'm not going to make any money. And I was like, well, are they all similar to the one that you initially sold? And she was like, no, there are different listings. And she said after shipping it, she was basically losing money. And I was like, well, how much did you sell for? And she said something a little better. Yeah. About including free so like $10 or something. And I'm like, why did you think you could make money selling something for $10? Yeah. You the know? shipping thing so, really confuses people at first. So I like, once you get the shipping, shipping, that's, that's the piece that is the most complex and confusing to learn. Money. It's like, I have to train people on the shipping and it's literally like they still, they've worked for me yeah. for, for months and still have questions about shipping, you know, because the shipping's always changing. And yeah. so yeah. just really get familiar with shipping. I tell yeah. people go over to pirateship.com and go put in some random zip codes and random yeah, yeah. box sizes and weights yeah. and just start looking at, you know, what comes up in the options and don't do free shipping until you understand it. Yeah. Because you have to put your shipping into your price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. true.
No. And then I told also, her like, what to do, and she didn't listen. And she lost some money. Like, well, yeah, well, I mean, I literally she's got to learn. Her. Yeah. <laughs> so she had to learn. She learned. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually started a group over on Facebook that's a buy sell group just to have uh -huh. a safe place for people to start playing around with those, like you were saying, like just to, you know, nobody's going to come like crash your door down if you did the shipping wrong or something. Right. So yeah. uh, it's a very kind group. Um, that's good. And um, I don't know, it's Melissa, it's Melissa over in the chat. Usually she'll put the link over there. It's called Vintage with Style Buy Sell Cool Stuff. So if nice. anybody wants to just come over and get your get your toes in the water with selling some stuff, um, that's awesome. Super that's easy over there. But I mean, eBay used to be the easy place to start selling too. Yeah. eBay's gotten a little more complex. Yeah, um, a lot. And, well, I think I think it's honestly I think eBay's still pretty. It's still pretty easy in my opinion. Yeah. I just think there's a lot of easier platforms now yeah. mm -hmm. you know like with shipping for example i think the first company to do um the provided shipping labels was posh yes and that's a huge they took a lot of market yeah. share um at the beginning not so much now but at the beginning they took a lot because you could just list something they provide the shipping label you slap it on the package and ship it out um whatnot is a lot like that as well now whenever an item sells it charges their credit card you get a shipping label and you print it out and ship it out there's nothing yeah, to think yeah. about yeah. and that takes a lot of the headache out of things and even to the point where i don't know if this is the case but let's say that the company is making money on the back end with of the shipping costs we don't care because we don't have to deal with the hassle of doing that you know if they're charging eight dollars for a shipping label um, to the customer and it's only costing them six bucks and they're making a couple bucks, which I'm sure is the case in a, in a lot of um, situations, we don't care because we we don't have to pay for the shipping. The buyer pays for the shipping, and you don't have to deal with making sure you know all the information is correct and deciding what uh, shipping method to go through and all that stuff. So I don't know. I think that there's little tweaks. I wish that I wish that eBay. I wish it, it was easier for eBay to change their systems Yeah, because they're a massive publicly traded company. It's very difficult for eBay to make yes. little tweaks like that, that could make a big difference. And by the time they actually start to make those tweaks, they've already fallen, you know, behind. It's behind. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and again, I love eBay. I'm not harping on eBay. Yeah. But, there's things that people have asked for for two, three, four years. And there's eBay, things people have asked for for 15 like, years. It's coming, it's coming, yeah. it's coming. And then it finally gets here and you're like, okay, that's cool. Also, <laughs> did you look at the <laughs> So, yeah. um, but if it wasn't for eBay, we wouldn't be resellers. So, absolutely. eBay, actually, eBay wasn't the first, Amazon was actually the first. Um, but it started out, the only thing you could sell on Amazon was books. Books, yeah. It was just books. Um, so eBay was really like the first platform for right. third-party resellers to just bring anything. And I mean, it was anything <laughs> at the beginning. The wild, wild. You didn't wild even need pictures. You That's just amazing. put up a description of something and sold it. It was, it was wild. Had I known then that it would be what it is now i would have like tracked so much more and yeah and taken more right. pictures of you know screenshots and stuff yeah. i wish i could like go back in time but do you think that information is anywhere do you think ebay I stores wonder. any of that they must have something right they, they must have an archive somewhere yeah. they must i mean oh, i don't even know. everybody says what's the first item you ever sold and i'm like i have no idea yeah. It was in 1998. Like my, I wasn't thinking this was going to be a thing. I started it as just a fun yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea it would become my career. Yeah. To, to do and teach other people eBay and, and all of that. So yeah, really isn't that cool? About. Isn't that cool though? In what is that? 20, 24 years, how much things have yeah. changed where now you can, we can sit here and have a full conversation thousands of miles away from each other. And that's why, too, going back to what you were saying about the changes is like eBay has evolved so much. And the thing with eBay is they didn't they didn't have the same advantage that Poshmark, Etsy, Mercari, all these yeah. other sites could learn from what Amazon and eBay did and are doing yeah. and that has worked and hasn't worked and just make it that way. Whereas I always say eBay has to do something 
in the same sense of like working on a jet in flight. They can't right. park it and do the work, you know, just let's just close eBay for a few days. That's true. Yeah, that's true. You know, can't do it. So everything they do has to be while it's all in motion with millions and millions of yeah. listings and transactions taking place. And it's kind of crazy to think it about. Is. They do a pretty good job considering how huge the task is. For and they're sure. publicly traded. People yeah. always forget that. And that yep. means that they can't just make a change yep. on a dime, on a win. Right. They can't just turn around, snap their fingers and say, hey, we want to do this. They're publicly traded. It does not work that way. Yep. <laughs> and so have you guys tried the new listing tool yet? We just got a question about that. No. Oh, no. I thought I was using the new listing tool and then I just got the alert that the listing tool is changing. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not using the new listing tool. So do you know? Yeah. Do you know what, what, what it is? I, I don't even know what it is. I mean, I know that the way, the way that the listing, um, like when you go to list an item, the design of it completely changed and we are using the new version mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So like, yeah. It's a it's a much more I actually think it's a much more in tune system. It's it's almost like listing. It's almost like they designed the new one to list from from mobile. Um, it makes it a lot easier to list from like a phone. So, well, that's what and that's why I thought I was already using it because they had started doing that the conversion of making it the same experience from mobile to, yeah. to desktop. But apparently, I wasn't. I'm, I'm just I'm starting a listing to see if I get that same alert that I had earlier just to see if we can get a sneak peek of what it looks like. Of course, I picked like a catalog item. You can never find a catalog item. Oh, here it is. Try the new listing tool. Okay, here we go. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen here in a second once I get this to pull up. See what it looks like. Okay, let me Claudia, I am originally from South Africa. I'm not Canadian. <laughs> but I get that a lot. I do get that a lot. Just because you don't sound American. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so yeah, we are, us we are using the system. Oh, my. Okay, I so it, start with pictures. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it seems like a drastic change, but once you get used to it, it's a, I think it's better, personally. Oh, so you can import. Okay, okay. I see mm -hmm. what they're doing here. So if you take your pictures on your phone, this is like integrating yeah. your phone and your. Yeah. And even the way that it's laid out, you can tell it's kind of way more mobile. This, optimized. this is not bad, guys. This is no. not bad. I've heard a lot of complaints about it, but it's not bad. Yeah. I find it's, it's actually faster to list through this uh, system. It actually looks more point. streamlined if you ask yeah. me eBay's been working really hard to make it faster to list yeah. because they know on other apps, which are their competitors, right? Not maybe direct, but they are their competitors. It's easier and fast to list. So they have been for years trying to compete. Hopefully they do because eBay gets a ton of traffic and you can sell everything and tons yeah. of people go to eBay and everyone that's a household name. Everybody knows what eBay is yeah. for the most part. And even our friends, when there's something that's weird and rare and hard to find, the first place they're going is eBay. Mm -hmm. Whatever right. that weird still, item is, still, they're still, going yeah. to eBay. Even if it's only once a year, yeah. our friends now are starting to use eBay and these other apps, they don't have the same amount of categories that eBay does. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And even like Poshmark, if you're a seller, the hard goods are still not quite taking off with yes. Poshmark, but clothing and shoes and accessories. And again, they're the millennial market. Yeah. You know, um, it seems like a lot of people are saying they, they like the new yeah. uh, listening tool. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was like, Oh, like, uh Oh, what is this going to be? And I'm like, oh, look at that. It's like big deal. Yep. It's, it's good. Yep. Yeah, I was like that every time I was using any type of a system, even my Gmail. I remember when Facebook was doing it all the time, they would change the um, like kind of like it felt like they changed the whole operating system right on the back end. And then you would log in like nothing is where it was. Mm -hmm. And it was like you have to acclimate so fast, so quickly. And I wasn't good at it and it annoyed me, but it was always for the better. 
Although Netflix, when they changed the way Netflix was, remember it was it was very like old school, and then they changed it to like this that new system. Mm -hmm. And you used to be able to use the old one, and I did, and I still to this day hate the <laughs> new one compared to the old one. So <laughs> Netflix is the only system where I'm like, oh, I wish they had kept the old one. It was so much better to find things, and the rating yeah. system was better. I don't know why they simplified it s too much. It was like oversimplified. We but don't like change. I think that's like yeah. human nature. Is it like is. we get it we get comfortable in something, yeah. even if it's not the best. But because we're comfortable, we know it. We're kind of on autopilot, yeah. and then they like change it on us, and then it's like ah. Oh, but then you can get back into that. Yeah. Comfort. Pretty, yeah. yeah, and everything's going to change always, so we just have to accept it and get used to it. I mean, there's nothing that's yeah. going to always stay the same. And the more the it's more you get out of your comfort zone, the easier it is when changes happen. Like yeah. honestly, that getting getting too comfortable is, in my opinion, is a bad thing. You should definitely, you know, you should try to challenge yourself, be uncomfortable, because when those challenges do come up, you'll be able to handle them a lot better. Yeah. I mean, and also like talk about the elasticity of your brain, your mind, right? And like your cognitive abilities, whenever you are willing to deal with change effectively, it's going to help you in the long run, just period. Yeah. And it's okay. mindset going into it too. I think if you look at things as exciting, change is exciting. And thinking about the fact, I always tell everybody, eBay is not looking out for your best interest. They are looking out for their best interest. Oh, for sure, yeah. Right, which you happen to benefit from because you selling stuff benefits yes. them. Yes. So the changes <laughs> they make, the things that they do are for what's best for the site overall. And you have to learn how your business then fits in that and takes yes. advantage of that. Yeah. But trust that eBay wants you to sell stuff. They yes, want for that. sure. <laughs> they want it. They want you to sell stuff and get as much money out of you selling the stuff as possible. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence why you should be using all the tools that they provide. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like using promoted listings, but the thing is, like, you should. You should use them, even if you're not using them on every single item. If all you, I did a little uh, uh, snippet in a video recently about this, but. Um, we've tested this back and forth and back and forth over and over again. We've promoted everything. We've promoted nothing. And it's, it's actually one of the easiest ways to track if promoted listings are working for you is just by your listing impressions. So if you go and look at your listing impressions, you'll see promoted impressions and organic impressions. Turn on promoted listings and watch and see how many more listing impressions you get. If you're getting a bunch more listing impressions, it's going to translate to more sales. That's just the way that it works. The more eyes you get on your items, the more people are going to click through and the more people are going to buy, right? I always advise though, on, depending on the, because I sell a lot of like rare things. And there's no reason to do promote it because absolutely well, yes yeah only three yeah. so and yeah. that yeah but I do say if, if you've got competition yeah use it and we have a scale that we go by as well so up to for us it's up to eight percent because that's what our margin can handle so on a highly competitive item we're promoting at eight percent on something that is not very competitive we're, prom we're usually promoting around three or four percent and then like you said on those items where there's no competition at all or like a super rare item we don't promote those items yeah. But out, about 50% of our sales come through promoted listings. And can you explain what a listing impression is? We had somebody who said. Like, yeah, so it, it very simply, it's if it shows up in front of someone's face, it counts as an impression. So if it shows on their screen, it's an impression. If they click on it, that would be a click through. So you in your analytics, you'll see listing impression, which means it just showed up on the screen. If they're scrolling, even if they didn't click on it, if they click on it, that would be your click through rate. So you'll see, you know, listing impressions, 11 million, and then your your Click, uh, clicks, whatever it is, and then it'll, it'll yeah. calculate your click through rate. It's very important to watch that. Yes. Yeah. You want, you don't want a lot of impressions without a click through. True. That's what you don't want. Yeah, right. That's, that means that's when you look at your listing wrong. and go, okay, uh, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. That yeah. usually means something's wrong with your title, your pictures, or your price. Yeah. That's yep. all. Thrifty in Vegas loves your alley I crafts. Oh, I need to make more videos. <laughs> Every time we go up to the ranch, though, I have a lot of items on my to-do list and crafting just gets pushed back. But it's okay because when we are living up there, crafting will be my number one thing. I wanted to spend a whole year where crafting is number one and see how that goes. I hope it goes really well. I'll still help with like the whatnots, but I'll step back from maybe like anything really too much like eBay 
and we'll still go garage selling for fun, you know, always and thrifting, of course. But I'm going to really try to do the crafting channel because that's my passion. And I think it brings a lot of people joy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have a project. Everybody's like, when are you going to do your mushroom project? And I'm like, soon. <laughs> yeah, what is it? What is this? So I'm making solar lights for the backyard out of old pieces of glass. Ooh, what? Cool. Yeah. And I was like waiting for it to get warm. And now that it's warm, I'm like, I've got like a ginormous project going on. Um, yeah. so like, eh, mushrooms get pushed over here. <laughs> I understand. It happens. I, crafts always get pushed back, even though they bring me so much happiness. I uh, yeah. I really should like prioritize them. Well, you're, you're, <laughs> yeah, you are like a much just more centered, happy person when you are crafting, when you are making things. It quells the chaos of my mind. Yeah, exactly. My ka just went off. Hey. <laughs> um, someone asked, and I love this question, do you think new sellers should offer returns or not? Yes. So I think 100% of sellers should offer returns across yeah. the board. Yeah. Um, it, it brings you more credibility. You're going to get more sales. Uh, it's just the right thing to do, in my opinion. Like, I would say at least offer the minimum, which is what, 14-day or buyer returns. You don't have to do free seller returns. Is, that's, is I it think that's or did they bump it up to 30? Oh, I don't know. I We've always done – so you don't have to do – what larger sellers do who can eat the cost right so like we do free seller returns on everything that we do even on the larger items and we work we just work it into our bottom line mm -hmm. um but when you first start out i would suggest doing buyer paid returns especially on larger items because if you yeah. sell something i still do that you still do that exactly yeah, do that. there's nothing wrong with doing that at all um but you should offer some sort of a return. And it just makes sense, right? So from a consumer's point of view, if, if, if we have the exact same listing, exact same listing, exact same feedback, right? Exact same price. And yours has no returns on it. And mine has 30 day returns on it. From a consumer's point of view, they're going to go with the one that gives them some sort of a safety net, which is that free or the returns. Yeah, it's a trust, it's a trust factor. And especially yeah. if you are a newer seller with not a lot of feedback, you know, people want to know that if what they get is not what they expected to get, they can get their money back. And yeah. I think what a lot of new sellers don't understand, it's going to happen anyways. Anyway. So, yeah. I mean, all they have to do is say item not as described exactly. and now you've got to pay for them to ship it back. Exactly. Whereas if you have a return policy and they yeah. get and they just don't like it, yep. then they have to pay to send it back. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's a really good point. That's, I say yeah. that all the time. They're going to find a way to return it anyway. So you may as well offer free return. Not free return. You can do I have 60 day. returns. Yes. 60 day. I, I have 60 days because here's my theory. It's long. Based on personal experiences, the longer the period of time you have to return something, the more likely you're going to procrastinate and you're going to forget about it. Mm. Oh, and that's true. I that's have found that to be true. That even the returns that have been opened on on my eBay store, I generally don't get them back, <laughs> which means I never have to refund and we just close those cases. So. Yes. Yeah, that happens a lot so with us true. as well. That's yeah. so true. And again, eBay is actually pretty, pretty lenient about returns. Like we've had, I think the longest we've ever had on Amazon was 11 months later, the person opened a return oh and Amazon just automatically sides with the buyer every single time. So at least there is some sort of like a, yeah. <laughs> a little leeway with eBay. So yeah. And it's good that they do that because then you get those awesome Amazon return boxes. That's true. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Facts. But I think that's the thing with Amazon. Doesn't Amazon actually eat the cost? They don't take it away no, they, from the third-party seller? They take it away seller? from the seller. Oh, they don't eBay. care about the sellers at all. For at least sure. eBay cares about their sellers. That's no, what I always don't. say is at least Amazon, oh. or eBay isn't Amazon, and I hope eBay never tries to be Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, because they're not. They're a completely different animal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's a great animal, by the way. Yeah, I love Amazon. <laughs> eBay it's is awesome. So many people opportunities to make money. But, yeah. You know, I don't really like selling on Amazon. It's very annoying unless yeah. you have a wholesale deal with somebody and then it's it felt just too much like a job. It's a job. It is. It's a job. You're a, you're a logistics company. You're yeah. packing stuff up and shipping yeah. it off and that's it. And it's bo it, this type the type of stuff that sells on Amazon in my opinion that that does really well is boring stuff. Like yep. 
there's something about going to a thrift store, going to a yard sale that just is, is it's a treasure hunt. It's, it's a, treasure a lot of hunt. fun to do that. It's, yeah. It's Whereas true. if you're a very analytical person and all you like to do is, is build business and look at numbers, do Amazon and you'll Amazon be a multimillionaire. Brain, yeah. It's a lot easier yeah, to do that on a, Amazon. Um, like, you know, what's funny. Um, like, you know, you know, Chris Lynn, daily refinement. Mm-hmm. He is such an analytical person and is, he's so good at eBay, but I guarantee you he would be so much better at Amazon because he's so good at fine tuning things and looking at the numbers and getting wholesale deals and stuff like that. Way his yeah. brain he works. would make a hundred million dollars a year on Amazon, but he's really good at eBay too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because there's a lot of numbers to look at. You know, being able to analyze and look at numbers is just a gift. I mean, that's it is. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. and enjoy it. You know, it hurts my brain. Numbers hurt my brain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like numbers, but sometimes you don't want to be like the bean counter, right? When it comes to numbers and get caught up in like the little things, you need yeah. someone else to kind of whisper in your ear that. But that's, that's definitely a difference. Yeah. Kelly's in the chat. <laughs> there's Kelly. What up, Kelly. Kelly. Well, thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. Quite a few people said that they subscribe, so thank you. That's awesome. I always, I always tell Carrie, who, who works for me, that she's my Cali. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've got my Cali too. You get to meet her. Carrie's going to come to the next. Uh, Sweet. Reseller remix. That's awesome. Okay, guys. Questions, questions. Let's see. Um, I'm a new seller. Do I put in sales tax info or let eBay do their thing on that? I know I have to save to pay tax later, but do I do it on the listing? So I see, I see a, um, a confusion already there, you guys. So sales tax and income tax, two completely different things. eBay's taking care of the sales tax stuff for you, but you are going to have to track your expenses and your revenue and, or your income and take care of your income taxes on that end. So just to to be clear, but what's your advice about the whole sales tax thing? And <laughs> Yeah, eBay takes care of it for the seller, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, where it gets a little tricky is once you once you like register your business as an LLC in your state. Um, some states like Florida, for example, uh, we have to collect sales tax um, on in, you know, your in-state sales are the most important ones. So like if we have a market or something, obviously we would have to collect and pay sales tax right. in Florida. And then also you can get a thing called a reseller's certificate, mm -hmm. which gives us the right to like if we go to an auction or if we buy wholesale, um, we don't have to pay that 7% sales tax up front because they know that we're going to be collecting it on the back end. You so guys are only at 7%? Yeah, isn't that crazy? 7.5%. Wow. Uh, 7.5% in Hillsborough, yeah. yeah. We're at almost 9% now. Uh, oh, yeah. Tax is going up. Do you have, do you have a ridiculous. state income tax too? No. Well, that's good. Oh, okay. No, we don't have that. Yeah, we don't either. <laughs> oh, if Florida, but okay. nobody move here. Everybody stay out. Of <laughs> nobody but wants to move to Florida. Florida is terrible. Bad. Don't move here. Everything's going. Are you guys like? Are you central? We are. Yeah, central. Yeah, okay, central. central area. Yeah. 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 The power rates are going take up. My kids to uh, Disney World one of these days. We've never been. How old is your? They're well. One of them's turning fifteen on Thursday. Whoa. The other one turns 17 next month. So. Oh, you oh want to go to Bush gosh. Gardens. Oh, okay. Not Disney. Teenagers. You want to do Bush Gardens. Well, but, okay. And right. Universal. I mean, if they've never been to Disney, though, you have to. I know, but it. I would say Bush Gardens and Universal trump Disney at that age. If they like thrill, uh, thrill, thrill rides, yeah. for sure. Yeah. We've, we've been to Universal Studios in California. Similar. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Do you have an Islands of Adventure version in... California, because we have Universal, which is built next to Islands of Adventure, their own by Universal. I don't think so. Lots of rides, roller coasters, instead of like, you know, um, like virtual rides, it's very roller coasters. Melissa, where are you? Where it's 13? Canada. Oh my goodness. Canada's well, but you get a lot for your taxes in Canada. That's Canada true. Should, here are their citizens. We spent, uh, we spent a year in Australia and we had a business over there. And I think at the peak, our business was paying 51% in tax. So more okay. than what we were making was going to tax. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was insane. But like, you can kind of see where it goes. The parks are really, really yeah. nice. Healthcare is covered. Like, it's, it is pretty cool to see that yeah. your money is going towards something. Yeah. As long as you can see where it's going. I, I think that's, and I don't want to get political, but I think that's the problem most people have is like, 
they don't see where their money is no. going to, <laughs> to I know. Yeah. Yeah. You go down the street and you're falling through the potholes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, gosh, hey, yeah. In our area too. It's I mean, that's also a tiny population. The whole whole of Australia is what, 23 million people or something? It's like, like Florida. It's like Florida's part. It's a lot of people all like, like mostly in one location. Like yeah. most of Australia is like yeah. barren. Yeah. It's a very pretty country. It is. It's dangerous too out in the wow. wilderness. <laughs> well, you guys got big spiders there in Florida too. We do. I remember when I was there. Oh gosh, was it last? I want to say june or july i was in florida and we stayed at this really cool resort and i woke up in the morning and on the screen door there was these huge bugs just sitting there i'm like i'm not going outside <laughs> like, we don't have those here you guys are <laughs> you guys are crazy living with all those bugs yeah but so vegas is like from moving to florida there you go you're welcome we have crazy bugs no. and wolf spiders and banana spiders. Yeah, no one move here. If they it's bite terrible. you, it like rots your flesh and you have to get it removed. <laughs> All right. You guys, we have time for more questions. Now we're, yeah. we're off talking about bugs and such now. Bugs. <laughs> Let's see. Are yeah. you finding that, uh, Danny, are you finding that most of your sourcing comes from thrift stores? Do you do estate sales? Yeah. And that's mostly because of YouTube. Um, I mean, yeah. for the content, I'm, I'm starting to break out of like the only being goodwill because that is what YouTube wanted me to put mm -hmm. up. But we've started yard sailing again, estate sales, um, that kind of thing. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm branching out, I'm branching Good. out. Good. Are you still doing, are you doing a video a day still on yeah. YouTube? You're a mad woman. Wow. <laughs> wow. people you people in the chat you don't realize how difficult that is like that's a that's a, a literal full-time job so congrats yeah. for being able to do that but. i got a lot of flack that i wasn't getting stuff up on ebay and i'm like it's a secondary job now you know to yeah. do ebay i had to get the right team in place to be able to start doing that to eBay. Yeah. but we're doing it we're like we got it i got Good. i have three people that work for me now oh so congrats that that's amazing everything yeah. done that's awesome um, i think that's also one of the cool things about like well you've been you've been selling stuff on youtube as well right yes yeah, yeah. That's one of the cool things I like about the the auction sites too is you can just go you know live for an hour and sell all the mm -hmm. stuff that you found that day so it moves inventory quickly yeah yeah and I sell a lot of stuff right from my videos this was yeah. something I, I never thought that was gonna happen you know yeah. but people started reaching out saying can I buy this can I buy this can I you know so we have like this whole routine every day is go and check the emails send yeah. invoices you know pull that stuff and it's pretty cool it is it was crazy for us when we first started selling stuff through you too. yeah first, yeah and then you started selling items on instagram, instagram and the yeah. instagram stories are just in post and it was crazy like because it was unexpected and we didn't think yeah. that that would you know translate at all and it did so that yeah. was pretty cool yeah. that was really cool actually it's very cool because we can give people a better price than if we do all the work listed on ebay have to yeah. pay the fees you know so it's a win-win it's a win-win yeah <laughs> no i should not be wearing a cape you guys no, no. I am just like, I can't even sit still at night. My brain has so much trouble getting out of like entrepreneur mode. Like I'm always thinking about the next thing, the next thing. So it's just, That's I good. keep busy. I love to stay busy. That's, this is getting yeah, me to, that. to do that. This is actually my day off. That's Mondays doing live is a day that I don't have to edit and put up a video. So this is, this is day off. Oh, nice. What do you edit? Nice. What do you edit with? What, what program? Premiere Pro. Nice. Yeah. Actually, oh. Noah, my son, does the majority of the editing, and then I just go back through and do the, the values. And Final tweaks. Nice. Add, yeah, things that I didn't buy that, you know, somebody mm. might want to know the prices on and stuff like that. Cool. That's an awesome skill for your son to have, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's He's really great. good. He comes in, like, I have, I mean, he comes in here and just, and it's, like, fixed. I'm like. I don't even know how you just did that, but cool. <laughs> yeah, what a good, what a good kid. Yeah, yeah, the, so why, kid. why is it that some items will not, will just not sell for me? Like trinket, uh, trinket boxes, studio art pottery. They're nice items. Just not sure why. 
Uh, just not sure why I can't get these particular items oh. to sell. Are you seeing sales on them from other sellers, Debbie, is my question? Because there might not be a market for them going on eBay for them. That might be more of an Etsy item, yeah. it sounds like. But um, are other people selling them? Or are you just finding these items, putting them up, and hoping they're selling because you like them? That's my yeah. question. And like you said earlier, it's usually pictures, price, or popularity. I like the three Ps there. Nice. Um, Good. That's now, first, when you get an impression is your picture compelling enough to cause them to click over that's number one pictures it matters they come over and you're and and sometimes it's not that your price too high it's that your price too awkward like some people don't like awkward prices like if it's a if it's a 20 dollar item and you price it at 21.99 or you price it at 20 it's less likely to sell than if you price it at 19.99 yeah Pricing is psychological. And then, of yes. course, like you were talking, popularity. Is it even an item that anybody wants right now? So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Lots of good questions to ask oneself when an item doesn't sell. Yeah. Ooh. Title and keywords, also really important. Absolutely. And your title and keywords are what usually get you the impression. Like, if you don't have a good title and keywords, you're not even coming up in a search for somebody to be able to click. So yeah, that's super important too. Let's see. And sometimes, sometimes uh, Debbie, it's not anything you're doing wrong too. Sometimes we'll look at stores and it seems like they're doing everything right, but sometimes it's just, you know, it just is what it is. The eBay algorithm doesn't like you that day, <laughs> but wow. there's ways to fix that too. Like you can go and, um, you know, ending, ending items and doing sell similar is still a way that does work. Uh, going and tweaking, bulk editing your listings and tweaking some of your prices up or down. Sometimes we'll raise all our prices by a dollar and more stuff will sell. Um, tweak your tweak your prices, go back in. And if you have a, an item that you, you know, you used to take pictures and the pictures weren't as good and now you take your pictures in a different way, go back in, retake your pictures, re-upload it. And, you know, it's this constant keeping on top of your stores yeah. is what, it's also what eBay likes. They want to see an yeah. active store run sales, run promotions, change your prices, tweak your listings, like stay active in your store daily. Yeah. And here's, here's something that I do too. Cause, and, and you guys don't beat yourself up. If not, everything sells huge retail stores. Don't sell everything. There's <laughs> always a percentage of stuff that's True. not going to sell yeah. no matter what. I think people are like, I didn't sell everything. It's like, no, you're not going to. But what I do is after a certain time period. So I like, I like, about the three month mark of something listed that's not like a super rare waiting for the right person but you know if there's others out there that have the item i have a a category in my store called um special values and i have a 25 percent and a 50 percent category so i run a markdown i move those things into that category run a markdown so everything in that category is 25 percent off or if it's there six months or more 50 nice. percent off and just start clearing stuff and yeah. then people go shop in your other items and they go oh well as long as i'm buying this and they combine shipping let me see what else i can find in there yeah. that i really like and so. yeah and when you run a sale you can sort you can look at what items have been listed for a certain amount of time yeah. So like when we run a sale, we'll be, we'll go, you know, what's been listed for 180 days. And on those items, we'll run a super steep sale for a month to get them cleared out. So you can sort by how long your item has been listed. Yeah. Cause yeah. sometimes we'll overprice something and we're like, Ooh, the market's not ready for that price. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Based off of, we'll look at comps and there might've been a fluke and we yeah, went off that. Prices are always fluctuating too. So, always. Always. Yeah. um, so I missed this question earlier, but it's a great question. Do you have a budget for money going out monthly for sourcing or just source as much as possible because more posts equals more income? So for us, we don't have a set budget. Um, we've, you know, we've been lucky to be able to build up the, the business's budget enough there where if a deal comes along, that's a deal of a lifetime, we can buy it. Um, but you have to get to that point and you can, that, that really comes down to your own personal needs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we tell people, especially when you're first, when you're first starting out reselling, the more money you can put back into the business, the better. So like we, most of the time it's not right for people to go full-time into reselling or straight off the bat. It's much better to have your full-time job and then start your side hustle. Yeah. 
and put as m all of the money. If you can put all of the money back into the business to buy inventory, that's really what you should do that for as long as you possibly can Absolutely. And, until you get to the point where you go, okay, now I can start paying myself. Um, but the, you know, the short answer is only you can really decide that if you need to take the money out, then you have to take the money out. If you can afford to keep it in the business and go and source with the money, then do that. You'll grow a lot faster if you can, if we could spend every single bit of the revenue that we get every week on inventory that we can flip for a profit, then that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I would rather at the end of the year, you know, if we have a, a, a million dollars, I would rather take that million dollars and spend it on items that we can flip for $2 million than yeah. just have it sitting there doing nothing, losing money. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone loves the bird. Yeah, I had, had to bring the bouge over. But the problem is, bougie has got this new thing about wanting to eat my clothing the minute. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Danny, thoughts on renting a booth? Have you guys ever done anything in like a booth situation? No, nope. we haven't. No, nope. no, nope. we know um, tons of people that do it. Yeah. Well, wow. uh, successfully. Uh, Chris um, Bonafide Hustler is really good at it. He's got a yeah. booth in, in Texas that he does really well with. Uh, but we don't really have we don't really have them in Florida as much as in other oh, places. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, booth. You know, and it's it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's going to depend on the place because a lot of antique malls have not evolved. They make right. their money basically on the rent that their vendors pay, and they're quite comfortable with that. But that's not great for for you as a vendor. You want a place that is actively marketing, is on social media, has the ability to put things mm -hmm. online. You don't want just they depend on the traffic that walks through the door because, as we saw in 2020, that can go very badly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's really going to depend on the space. And in fact, um, I'm still in a mall here in Vegas, and it's mostly just because. It's like storage with the potential to sell some stuff to yeah. pay the storage. Mm, I understand that. Yeah. Does it make you yeah. money though every month? Or it does. I mean, I, I pay the rent. Yeah, it pays the rent. And, okay. and probably if I worked it more, I could sell more. But um, it's not a great money maker, you know, for the amount of work it takes. But okay, I'm going to give a little tease yeah. here because everybody's like wondering what this big project is I'm working on. Let's just say there, there's going to be something new coming to Vegas. Oh. That is going to be very reseller friendly. There's nice. a hit. Yay. Here, eat that. Quit eating my clothes. <laughs> I think you're supposed to. Well, so we have friends who have macaws. And what they do with their macaws is they have to spray them with, with bad behavior with the little water bottle. Oh, yes, yes. And so I know that that's the only way to enforce this is bad yeah. behavior. Don't do it. And the birds learned how to scream from the neighbor's kids. And we were over oh, there yeah. and they were screaming. And I thought a child was dying. He was barking like the dogs. This oh, and I'm like, no. It's, it's amazing how smart they are. They pick up yeah. everything. I could not have a bird in my house. Yeah. And he <laughs> says, ow, because, yeah. you know, as he was learning not to bite, we'd say ow a lot. Mm, that's yeah. funny. How old is he? About six months old. Aww, still baby. baby. You're still baby, a baby, baby, huh? Huh? You good bird? Yes. Okay. Will you do this on command? Because everybody would really like to see you do this. You want this? Ooh. Do you want Ooh. this? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh. And it's Wait, funny because some of his words he says in this really, really deep tone because Noah taught him the words. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Ali Cattails asked, um, "How would you attack a project like organized organized hoardish home of step grandmas oh. to assess mm. full home of 50, 50 plus years and garage of potential treasures?" It yeah. sounds exciting and terrifying all at the same time. It does. Way. Yeah. <laughs> be, and a lot of people would not be able to do that. I personally would hire a company to help with it. I wouldn't tackle mm -hmm. it myself. There's yeah. there's a lot of estate sale companies out there that, you know, they're going to take 30%. Um, but in my opinion, it's better to, because they're they going to know. Clientele. 
they have a clientele and they're also going to know if it's a good one, they'll know the values of stuff. Yeah. So I would start that way by hiring an estate sale company. If you don't want to hire an estate sale company, though, you can do one room at a time, split the room into quadrants and just do yeah. one section at a time and try to sell stuff locally as well as sure. try to list it online yep. for the higher end stuff. You but that one by have some store. garage sales. Yeah. Maybe meet some other people who want to buy masks from you. But probably yeah, a, lot, a lot of people are afraid to do things like go into an estate sale company or an auction house or something because they do take usually a, about a 30 percent fee. Yeah. But remember, you're not going to get the prices for everything that they have because they sell everything one way or another. And so you're not going to realize that same amount of money that quickly. So you're paying for not only the work that they're doing, you're paying for their email list of clientele that come to all their sales yeah. and, and and show up. And then you get that check much quicker than sure. if you're going to try to piecemeal because we can tell you like how many people over in the chat so have funny. a death? Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting through. So, it's so cute. <laughs> He's so funny. It's so um, funny. How many people have a death pile, a pile of stuff that everyone has good intentions of getting it listed. I mean, because you're only one person and there's only so many hours in the day. Really? Really? Can we not right now? <laughs> That's true. You could start a YouTube channel about the house. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Or well, you there, there's always that. Yeah. yeah. I'd watch it. What we like to tell people is whenever you have a death pile, always pull the most valuable stuff out first and do those items first. Yeah. yeah. Why work for 30 bucks whenever you can work for $70? And donate. Same amount of time. Donate. Get yeah. the top right off, right off the top and find the stuff that you just don't want to deal with and get it out of your way. Boom. Gone. Yeah. You paid 50% Oof, that's a had an estate steep. sale. That's a steep. That's a that's a steep price to pay with an estate sale company. Yeah. If they're amazing though and it's worth it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. They're the only right. one. <laughs> they better get really good prices. That's that's the highest that's I've insane. ever heard. That's insane. Yeah. I haven't heard that. Yeah, exactly, Bree. I know. I call it a profit pile, but I know that the general standard out there is it's called a death pile. But it literally is. We were talking about that budget earlier. I mean, that is your money you've invested in your business sitting there doing yeah. nothing for Don't you. Don't waste money. Yeah. yeah. Like that's money waiting to be made. Oops. Let's see. Wait. Um, Anna, let's see. I'm on disability and on Medicare. My husband is afraid that I'll lose my Medicare and disability if I do this reselling. Oh, so I do address it. So how would you guys address that fear? It's definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can uh, figure out how much additional income you're allowed to make and then make just under that so that you don't lose those disability benefits. I know that that's a big that's definitely a big thing. You wouldn't want to do that to lose those benefits unless there was a way to obviously make enough money to um to cover those to benefits exceeded. yourself. Yeah, um, but for most people as like a retirement plan, I agree. I think it's better just to, what is the cap of how much additional money can you bring in? And then just focus on it. it honestly, it makes it really easy to know what your goal is. Cause if yeah. your goal, if you're to, if you can, if you're allowed to make an extra thousand dollars a month, now that's your goal and you can resell to hit that goal. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the advice I like to give too, and, and everybody's situation is different. And I know not all disabilities are something that you can overcome and still do this business. But I like to encourage you to not get trapped into the mindset that you can't lose your disability. Because yeah. if you are able to grow your business up to the point where you're in danger of losing that, you have the ability to make more than that. True. Yeah. So don't get stuck in that. And I'm not saying I'm, you know, you guys don't need to tell me your specific situations, but I stayed in that trap for many, many years and was so afraid of losing that not very great check every month, but it came every month. Yeah. And then I realized like, oh my gosh, I can do what I do and, and sustain myself and not have to worry about you know, who's going to tell me how much I can make and not make. So I just want to put that out there as an encouragement that mm -hmm. 
you can you can do really well in this business and it's a different amount for everybody as to what success means but as a single person you know doing five thousand dollars a month in sales is not unreasonable no so no. and then you know to do more than that you grow team and you have to add but but really this is a it, it, this is quite a great business absolutely and, the flexibility of working from home and, and doing what you do. So yeah. if you can do it. If you can do it a little bit. Look at how much you can do it and, and grow that. So you don't have to be dependent on that. How do I know when to stop shopping and wait for sales? <laughs> I have a big house and I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we made it to an hour. Oh gosh, I wasn't even watching the clock. We nailed it. All right. Oh. So we're gonna take this last question then, you guys. Um, so Never you stop forcing. Stop? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never pass a thrift store. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's pickier, you know. If and I'm like, I'm one to talk. I mean, but 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 you guys gotta remember, I'm like, I'm also making videos, and if I went in and didn't buy anything. I pretty soon I'd be losing subscribers. So, uh, <laughs> but as a reseller, you've got, you've got to know what your goals are, mm -hmm. like what the numbers, I mean, we joke about like data and analyzing numbers, but you really do need to know your numbers and you need to know whether you have a profitable business or not. Otherwise you're just a hobby. And if that's okay, then go into it with that mindset. But to make a real business out of this, you need to have actual profits so would you, what would you guys add to that um i mean again it depends on your goals if you're trying to grow if you're trying to grow into an actual real business then yeah you got to figure out you got to figure out the right way to do that to grow if you're just trying to do it as a hobby or additional side income which by the way i think is great for most people I think 99 percent so better for most people. better for most people. I think 99 percent of resellers should not go full time because <laughs> most people yes. it's a job, guys. Like most it people is. are going to get burned out doing it. And you're going to be like, why? Why did I do why did why I, I leave do? my job? Like and that's obviously it's a passion. Like, yes, it's it's mm -hmm. it's awesome. But to grow into a business that's doing multiple six figures, it takes a ton of work. And it's a real it's a very, very difficult thing to do. A lot of people are procrastinators and not self-motivated. And if yeah. somebody He's not there, you know, telling them what to do all day, every day. They're not getting it done and it, they end up not working out. Yeah. And you're also the majority of people aren't going to be able to grow a, like a, a big business by just thrifting, just by themselves. Correct. And by big business, that's that could you know vary for a lot of people. But I'm saying most people aren't going to be able to make six figures a year just going to thrift stores. It's nearly impossible to do by yourself. Especially nowadays. <laughs> Is it possible? Absolutely. It's definitely possible, but it's it's a difficult thing to do. So just, you know, keep that in mind. There's other ways to source. You can buy wholesale. You can go, you know, to auctions. You can go to estate sales. You can uh, do Amazon clearance and liquidation. You can go to liquidation companies. Like there's lots of different ways to grow a reselling business. Uh, but there's so many different ways that we've never even thought about. Like we know people who live off of yeah. credit card points. Yeah. We're just like, what? Crazy. And they explained to us. And I was like, I could never do that. You are so analytical and organized and you know what's going It's just everyone has a different way yeah. of making money. It's amazing. Yeah. Like amazing. Mikey said, it's much easier just to show up and work and leave. Yeah. 100% it is, but that is not, it's definitely not as satisfying as building your yeah. own business and being able to say, you know, the biggest thing people always ask us, like, why do we do what we do? And the big, the the main reason we do what we do is for freedom. Freedom, one hundred percent. The song, freedom. <laughs> and it 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 can sound a bit cliche at times, but it's true. Like we can, if we want to take the next six months off, we can do that and still pay Cali, and and our business will be totally fine. We can come back to it and do it whenever we want to do it. And that's because, like you said, we have other forms of of income. We have multiple different streams of income. So if we're like we're done, we're not going to source and we're just not going to do it anymore. We're done making YouTube. Don't worry, videos. we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not but but you building that type of a lifestyle is attainable through this business that's what's so crazy about it you can do it like if you, if that's what you want then you can absolutely do it even now when there's still yeah. when there's so much competition and everybody's doing it there's still 
if you if you want to put the hard work in and build a business, you can totally do it. Yeah. yeah. Working for yourself, hard work for yourself, opposed to hard work for someone else is a lot yeah. more rewarding. And if you don't want to do it and all you want to do is make an extra couple hundred bucks a month, that is awesome too. And that's Nothing better for 95% of people in yeah. our personal opinions for the yep. people we've met. A lot of people, they have just a job that they love too, yeah. but they wanted some extra money, yeah. you know, and their job is gratifying, rewarding. Like they work with other people that need assistance and they just want extra money. So they don't want to even leave their jobs, let alone their jobs have good benefits that they don't want to have to go through the hoops of. Yeah. So it's just a balance. Like what works? Everyone is different and unique and needs a different situation than the next person. So don't try to copy anyone exactly. But if you like what someone else is doing and trying to emulate them as best as possible is also totally cool. Solid, solid advice. <laughs> that was <laughs> that a serious was rant. <laughs> so crazy fast, you guys. Um, will you come on in the future again? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Awesome. You should come um, on our our channel too. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. Uh, everybody, if you're not already subscribed to Rally Roots, why not? Come on. Please. <laughs> or unsubscribe whoever is, and if you hate us, it's fine too. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're on is, our. We're you can go see them in that. action doing all the stuff that, you know, we just talked about today and you can, you see their business model and, and, and use these videos as inspiration to develop your own business model from all yes. of this. And, and that's what makes this business so cool. Yes. Um, so everyone take on this week, go out there. So what if it's slow sales time, just find some other way to boost your business this week. Stay positive, and with that, go be profitable and yeah. make it fun. We'll see you on the next <laughs> one, everyone. Say bye. Thanks, Say bye. Bye, Bougie. Bye, Bougie. Bye. 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 Oh, oh. <laughs>